Bush encroachment is a huge challenge for Namibia. 45 million hectares are affected. Bush encroachment reduces the productivity of rangeland. It decreases biodiversity and limits groundwater recharge. At the same time, bushes are a valuable resource. Encroacher bush can be used for a variety of products such as charcoal, animal fodder or energy production. The Namibian charcoal sector is booming and market players are excited about a new product, biochar. It looks nearly like charcoal and it actually is charred wood. But you would not bry or barbecue on it, it's far too valuable for that. Instead, biochar helps to increase the productivity of soils by increasing their capacity to store nutrients and water, and it can be used as an animal feed supplement. Also, there's a growing international market for it. Sakias Kafula is passionate about biochar and is the co-owner of a biochar-based business, Prime Biochar. The biochar that we produce essentially comes from rangeland resources. It's from bush, which is part of the rangeland ecosystem. Instead of the charcoal, which just takes the carbon off the land and we essentially export it, the idea is take that wood, convert it into biochar, put the carbon back into the Namibian soils. So in the end, what you'll have is much higher productivity from your rangeland. The production of biochar is quite similar to the burning of charcoal. However, you need a different kiln. Biochar is produced at higher temperatures than charcoal. Also, during the production process, it is quenched with water. This gives it an especially porous texture with a large inner surface. Because of this, it is capable to take in water, nutrients and other materials, just like a sponge. Michael Dege from the Namibia Charcoal Association explains this. We are here to look at uh, biochar, which is a valuable addition to our products on the farm. We use thin branches, everything that you can't use for boscos and what you can't use for charcoal, so it fits nicely in between. You can use any encroacher tree species in Namibia. Some of them you can't use for charcoal, but you can use all of it for your biochar because you use the thinner branches. Then coming to, to our production house mate, we use twigs that dry for about three months and it's then produced in a contiki kiln. Then we light it at the bottom then after we, we light it we use layers of 10 centimeter once you see the white ash on top we cover it again so you suffocate the layer underneath pyrolysis still carries on and that's how we add layer on layer till you right on top you can get out of small contiki kiln you can get about 500 half a ton of biochar out of that small size because you fill it to the brim and in the end the big difference between charcoal and biochar is it's quenched with water the water stays in you need to watch that it does doesn't catch fire even if you've quenched it you still need to guard it that it doesn't catch fire so you tip it in the contiki that we use here and then you let it just dry and stabilize a little bit before you start making it smaller we, you can use a hammer mill for that we use a normal traditional stamping tool like most farmers have it on the farm just to make it smaller parts and then it is used in the charging process the use of biochar as a livestock feed supplement is a rather recent development, but already thousands of years ago, it was used by farmers in South America to increase fertility and water holding capacity of their soils. They created the famous terra preta, which means black soils. South of Vintuk at Farm Krumhuk, biochar is used today to improve soils and productivity in the market garden. So I'm Mareike Vogts. I'm the vegetable garden coordinator. So at Krumuk, we use the biochar mainly in the garden. We sometimes also use it for the chickens. They also like eating it. But our main use is in the garden. So we include it in our soils. We first charge it with nutrients and microorganisms. And we then apply it on the soil. We dig it in a little bit so that it's just in the surface about 15 centimeters of the topsoil. I think it's really a, a long-term investment and it will show benefits over a longer period of time. The biochar doesn't decompose, it doesn't degrade. So it stays within the soil for hundreds and maybe even thousands of years. So if you put it into your soil once, you will keep it. So the inoculation or charging of the biochar means that before we add it to the soil, we want to include the nutrients and the microorganisms into that biochar. Because if we wouldn't do that, 
and we would just include the biochar raw without that charging or inoculation, it would take the nutrients and the microbes from the soil first. And the process is that we take the biochar after it's milled or crushed. We use cow manure, fresh cow manure, because that has the largest variety of microorganisms and most nutrients in that manure. We have a compost tea, we use plant teas, and we have whey left over from our dairy processing. So that also is, is water with lots of nutrients and also the microorganisms from the dairy processing. So those are our ingredients and then we mix it with the biochar. Biochar can be used domestically by both livestock and horticulture farmers to give nutrients back to the soil and to enhance its water holding capacity. This is a great benefit for a dry country like Namibia. There is also great market potential for the export of biochar. Internationally, biochar markets in Europe, North America and Asia are growing by an estimated 12% per year. The main market driver is the rising demand for organic food, which is driven by environmental awareness of consumers. In Namibia, biochar is used on both commercial and communal farms. Close to Okongo in northern Namibia, communal farmers of Farm Ongolulu make their own biochar for application on their farms. We use it for feeding for the animal and for change our soil. The biochar we mix, we mix with animal manure and then we mix with ground and then we put on our mahangu land or even in the gardens. Uh, Biochar has uh, uh, much benefit in the area uh, because it improves the soil if it comes to the field and also uh, helps on the treatment of animals. It has uh, an effect uh, on the community because we have so many bushes, dry up bushes, and by using Biochar I think we can also uh, create the, the, the or just the encroachment. And gosh, your bauta shit tamono, equa for tamono, a deulo, lo bauta. Or try for ta, or tamono, had to pass a vacuum through her poo, a venina when you go away there for Cayo di Tenawa. Yango conosin or sinam when you touch or sinan and the Onyango, had to go Onyango. Or had Drukuya Congequa for a pewe or two murikiren here, or bauta I don't get kidda, or Puaka Nefina when you are. With the great potential biochar holds in Namibia, it is not surprising everyone is excited about biochar. I think uh, currently nothing more excites me than biochar. One Christmas, and it was essentially during December, on Christmas Eve, and that was in 2000 and 2011, I sat in bed and thought to myself, if only a thousand people who went to bed hungry yesterday could essentially have a meal today on Christmas Eve, I would be much happy. And that is still a dream that I would like to see being brought forward and that comes into terms of food security. Bacha not only speaks to lowering the cost of irrigation or fertilizer, it enables us, if we can lower this cost, it enables the farmer to produce more on the little resources that we have. And also facing this uh, climate variation, and I think we are one of the countries that has been severely affected and it, should, it shouldn't limit us in producing food if we can add biochar to our soils. So that is where my patient comes from. In the end, it's about food security for the country, but then the added bonus is also about putting carbon into the soil, locking it in, and essentially contributing to reducing carbon emissions into the soil. Biochar is an investment into the future.